Hello everyone and welcome back to my Ultimate JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video we are continuing to follow our EVE and DUNA probes as they arrive at their destination planets and seeing what signs we can pick up. And while I've been time warping, we passed by the moon and got into interplanetary space with the EVE probe, the last one we launched in the previous episode, and it actually picked up a solar storm. We got some sort of readings from a solar storm that gave us some some uh, science credits. So things are progressing and we'll continue time warping here. Maybe we'll pick up some other things, but I think that's probably it for interplanetary space, we'll see. So first up, we're going to do a mid-course adjustment with the EVE probe. All right, here we go for this correction and ignition. A little ant engine. Best engine in the world. And, well, that will wander off because we don't have a very powerful reaction wheel and the ant engine can't gimbal. But let's see what we got around EVE from that. We appear to have an encounter. Maybe keeping it loose isn't too bad. We could potentially correct that once we get there. And really see the situation as far as comms. That'll make it easier to capture, but if it turns out that comms would be bad if we get low, we can probably avoid that. Also, the inclination is not great for hitting Gilly. So, but I don't know if we can really fix that there. Maybe we can do something more here. Okay, well, not as great from a comm standpoint, or at least in, if we are on the opposite side of Kerbin at periapsis, but this might be better as far as getting a gilly encounter. Well, there's something that could happen over there. So, anyway, we'll try this little correction then. Accidentally left that mod propellant on. I did not mean to do that. I don't think it's useful. It's in the probe core, but I don't think the probe core itself has RCS ports, so those are just going to waste. Okay, ant. So 574, we definitely have it. We should be able to get over to Gilly. And yeah, this is good. So we have a SOI change. And next up, the Duna supplies are entering Duna SOI. Uh, the Duna supplies do not seem to have comms. Uh-oh. Really? But... Duna Probe has comms, but I guess... We had uh, left off an antenna off of this one. Looks like it wasn't overdoing it, it was underdoing it. This one isn't actually going to be able to communicate from Duna. Um, this makes me worried about the Duna probes, so let's switch over there. Gosh, at a mid-course adjust adjustment, it was at 94% or something like that, and here, as we approach Duna, it's so weak. Uh, here, with the extra antenna at the top, this one has 58%. So I think it'll be all right, hopefully. I mean, now I'm a little rather worried about the whole thing. It looks like uh, it does drop off by the square, which means that as Kerbin goes further and further away, it's gotta be tenuous. But too bad we didn't have relay antennae on either one. We'll continue to follow the Duna supplies in and see what shape it um, ends up in. Well, this is a shocking... Oh, wait! Oh, it briefly got some. Why is it briefly getting some... comms? Sometimes, while I'm in time warp. Oh, no, it's, it's steady outside of time warp. 18%. Is there anything we can do about this that's going to help out? I guess uh, the ground station at Kerbin was on the opposite side or something, but it's still way tenuous. Uh, what are we at now? 6%? Okay, well, we'll see. 
Well, one way or another, we're entering Duna SY with comms, so there's that. Okay, well, I'll monitor the situation, and if we get close to losing comms, I'll replot so that we can capture early. It's possible to capture early instead of at periapsis, though it would cost more delta V, of course. Nope, we've lost it completely. Uh, but that's probably because the ground station's on the opposite side. Or there's just no ground station in this area. Oh, there we go. We've got 5% still. The atmosphere of Duna, we need to double check. 70 kilometers here. But I don't know if we're going to have one of those random signal dropouts or not. It's still at 5% here. There's just a tub of supplies, so... I mean, it's not super critical, it's just... Well, it's turned out to be a very interesting test of our comms. So, it turns out that the... vast collection that I put on the main Duna probe... was not overdoing it. And even it might have some trouble. Because by that time, Kerbin's going to be floating away even further. And early ignition to this capture burn. Oh, there's Duna. Looking a bit plain. It's just very beige. <laughs> it's not... it's not got features. It's like... leather. Or something. I don't know. It's not. It's not inspiring enough. We uh, we need to do something with that. Okay, we have captured around Duna and shut down. Let's see, even lower than the Ike orbit right now. We don't need to pass by Ike with this. This doesn't have all the science. So you know, if we park a base around Ike, maybe we want to drag these supplies over there. But for now, this will be a nice stable orbit. Not intersecting Ike is probably for the best. So yeah, it's got limited comms. But it's here. At least we've got that. I don't know if uh, there's a low over Duna telemetry. We also have the magnetometer. Boom, I didn't extend that. Shoot. Oh, well, it's sort of clipping the solar panels there. It's running. Electric charge seems fine for now, but on the nighttime side of Duna, it's going to have trouble. We have a day before the Duna probe, so this is probably not going to finish its work by then. I just wanted to see if the telemetry report gets done at low altitude. Oh, it was still transmitting, maybe? I didn't say anything. Oh, now it's running. It's got to take 138 days, though, because the signal strength is so weak. You know what? Let's just stop them from running. We've got them on the other one. It's probably safer. Alright, so I am going to go to the Duna probe and we'll follow that in. Well, this has 43% signal strength, so that's better. But if Kerbin's on the opposite side of the sun from Duna, that's not going to be good enough. It'll lose comms. I don't know if he'll have enough time to do the science or not. Okay, it is in Duna SOI. I've got this capture plan that includes a Ike Pass. We might want to refine that later. We might also want to do that capture burn early, we'll see. Let's just make sure our instruments are working. No storage space. Why aren't you transmitting? No, I can only transmit at 0.1 byte per second. Gosh. Well, that's... sad. <laughs> With all this stuff, that's the best it can do. 0.1 byte per second. Well, let's hold off on the... well, the micrometeorite impact data 
is valuable and everything, but and it's big. Probably get rid of it. But we need to record more stuff. I mean, of course, this will get into orbit around Duna, so it'll have its time. But it doesn't look like we're gonna get that science in a hurry. Oh, there's Duna and Ike. Now our periapsis is fairly high, but we'll just try and keep it safe for now and then worry about the science later on, the low science. So yeah, this way, keeping the periapsis high will allow us to capture... Oh, we're actually sort of catching up to the Duna supplies right there. But uh, allow us to capture while maintaining comms right through the capture burn. This stage should be fairly quick, it's not the ant engine right now. And go. I mean, the sad thing is that we're not getting money for this, so we can't unlock the R&D building, so... We're limited to the science that costs 90. We can't get the 160 level ones. Okay, separation. Probably should have turned first, that thing has a reaction wheel in it. Okay, and... Ignition. Well, let's head over to Ike. Um, I mean, but the thing is, we're not going to transmit enough information beforehand. Uh, we'll still be clogged up, I think. Oh, maybe not. Some of it has transmitted. Did we, did we get the science? Oh, uh, the rest of the science was in the other part. Ah, it was stored in the other portion, that's why. We lost it. Uh, the other thing has a probe core that has storage, I suppose. And it got stored over there instead of on this. That thing doesn't have enough comms to send it back. Oh well. Well, we are losing power here too. Well, that's because we were on the nighttime side. Turns out we needed those sill panels and RTGs after all. But our transmission rate is so slow. Duna space high micrometeoroid impact data. We can get that some other time. I want to make sure we get everything else first. So let's just stop it and also dump that science. We'll pick it up later so that all this can be collected. We should have space for everything else. It's just a micrometeoroid impact data that's really tough. Transmitting at none. Well, this one is transmitting at 0.1 bit bytes per second. Uh, this is gonna take a while. <laughs> uh, we have storage space now, right? Um, magnetometer scan is pretty large. All right. Well, let's stop that and cancel that. Otherwise, we won't get the Ike science. 89 days, and that's not actually transmitting right now. So, this being a science boon, uh, it doesn't look like it. We're gonna need higher bitrate transfers than this. I know it'll occur in the background, so you don't have to tell me that a hundred times, but it's still gonna take a while. No, oh, it's actually on the next orbit that we have the Ike encounter. Okay, well, we still have a stable orbit around Duna, so that's fine. It's actually the one after. Very complicated. Oh, that was a Duna space solar storm. Now it's transmitting that information. That took up space. Okay, we've entered Ike SOI. We got the telemetry report. Or maybe are getting... No, it seems... Nope, that's the high-gain antenna. Uh, it's still running. It needs some more space. Just about a tenth more, or 63 kilobytes. So we might not actually get all of it. Which is sad. Signal strength is down to 34% now. At some point, this is going to lose connection with Kerbin, because Kerbin has drifted too far. 
It'd take 13 days to complete the telemetry report, it says. And it can't get any of the other science in the meantime. So our pass by of Ike is not particularly good. But we're not going to duplicate it. We're not going to pass by that second time. I don't know, it doesn't hurt too much, but... Our orbit's getting a bit weird. That says five days. I don't know which orbit I'm supposed to click to get shorter than five days. I mean, I want my next orbit. Why am I getting an orbit in five days? There we go. Okay, that should be safe on the Duna side and probably safe on the Ike side so it doesn't re encounter Ike. So let's go with that maneuver. Pulling both the periapsis and apoapsis down. Okay, so hopefully that's safe for now. And it'll continue transmitting as long as it's got a connection back. But it's not going to be for its entire orbit, then it'll have to wait until the next time Kerbin's in close proximity, which would be a while. So we're not picking up as many science points as I would like. But at least we'll pick up some, I suppose. Minmus is still probably the best. We should just... Uh, even more incentive to science spam Minmus instead of worrying about sending interplanetary probes. That's effectively what Kerbalism has done. Kerbalism has made it so that Minmus is even more attractive than ever before. I don't know if that was the intention or not, but... Alright, well... Maybe uh, Kerbalism needs to be scaled for JNSQ. Like... Because the distances in JNSQ are more, maybe the transmission rates just drop down so dramatically because it's still scaled for Kerbin. I'll need to check that out. Maybe, you know, if this was Kerbin, of course, at Duna, we wouldn't be getting 0.1 bytes per second. We'd be getting something a little bit better than that. So, maybe? I don't know. I don't know what you guys think about that or whether Kerbalism is being exactly how it's supposed to be. But... That presumably, if somebody else uh, puts together this particular sort of situation with JNSQ and Kerbalism, they're going to have the same situation. So, unless there is a known configuration that I'm supposed to be using that I haven't put in. But anyway, let us uh, continue and go see how our EVE probe does on its capture around EVE. Well, as the EVE probe gets into EVE SOI, at least it has a green line back, though occasionally it has been drop-offs because the ground stations around Kerbin are not continuous. We'll have to figure out exactly where the ground stations don't cover. It doesn't seem like we'll have too much trouble with comms going in. What's the transmission rate? We have a 95% signal strength. That says it's waiting. We've got a telemetry report EVE space high. Transmit duration two minutes, it says. So, well, it's not transmitting though. 0.2. Uh, well, this, this says kilobytes. Kilobytes per second. But I don't see it transmitting kilobytes, but, but that's because it's still collecting them. So, I don't know why we're, we're getting 0.1 bytes per second over at Duna, but we're getting kilobytes per second here. I mean, 95% is good and all. But seems like a gap. <laughs> okay, well, let's see. I want, I want to try and finish up the telemetry report and temperature scan first. Yeah, here everything transmits at a decent clip. Look at all that go. Well, stay, still taking a while on the magnetometer scan and micrometeoroid impact detector. There's Eve. Eve is very green. That was supposed to be purple. Yeah, it's only halfway collected on the magnetometer right now. 
Uh, maybe we should start early just for safety's sake. We're pretty high up anyway, and it doesn't take too much Delta V. Yep, very green. Very green. I feel like that's like Jules turf. Okay, ignition. Okay, we have captured. That could, in theory, foster some sort of encounter with Gilly. I think for now I'll just try to get the low over Eve science. Uh, there's something going on there, but we've got too much inclination gap on that side. So, yeah, I don't know exactly where low over Eve counts as. Uh, hopefully under 200 kilometers will be fine. And then we'll worry about uh, we'll worry about Gilly a little bit later. So we're doing a little a little correction at Apoapsis while we continue transmitting this stuff. And this was an expected blackout period on this side of Eve. Really green. These big batches of data better be worth it. Okay, we transmitted the magnetometer scan Eve space high, it says. Well, why do we still have some then? Hmm. Oh, went too far, but that should be okay. Double check the atmosphere of Eve, but it was not in three digit kilometers. Yeah, a mere 60 kilometers, which is just shocking. Okay, well, we can continue transmitting stuff and probably get the low science. Let's see. Magnetometer, though. Uh, it says waiting. Okay, now it's done. All right. Uh, finish up that micro micrometeoroid impact data so that we can get the low science over EVE. No, we're not going to have enough space to pick up the low science at EVE this time around. We got some stuff really quickly there. It says um, temperature scan and... So I guess the micrometeoroid impact data made space for it there. Uh, I want to clear it, otherwise in Gilly space we're not going to have enough time. Oh, there's Gilly coming around and we're not, got, we're not going to hit it. Oh well. Radiation scan we got. Magnetosphere, huh? Oh, there was a solar storm too. Why is Duna not so good? <laughs> why, why is this so easy? And we're getting all the datas, and Duna's that horrible. Makes no sense. We even left off- well, no, we have all the- we left off two of the antennae. We left off the round ones. Otherwise we're using the same ones. Well, Carbon is pulling away and that's reducing our transmission rate. I don't know about that magnetometer scan, but uh, maybe we can do something. Well, it's a pretty hefty correction, but we'll try to do that to make it easier to hit Gilly, because that'll fix our inclination with it. I want to encounter it before our transmission strength gets too bad. Uh, Eve is sort of blinking a bit. Okay, here goes the burn. Let's see what we have here now. About point two degrees. Gilly is very small though, so might not be accurate enough, but we'll see what we've got. Okay, I feel like this should guess it a Gilly encounter because if we See what's happening right before it. You can see target position and everything. It's getting closer, 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 closer. And then it messes with me. And then after that, it gets further away. But here it's getting closer, 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 closer. I don't know why the maneuver node system has to do things like that. 
Okay, well, something like that might get us an encounter with Gilly. I'll stay on the map view, even though it's not quite so nice. Because I want to see if it actually dares to show us the Gilly encounter. Hey, we can probably do it right now. It's not going to make too much of a difference. Or it might be even better. I'm not sure. This is prograde burn. Closer to Eve would be better. Nope. Oh, oh, now it's showing me the encounter. Well, our closest approach. We'll fix it at Apoapsis. Well, I don't know what we're going to get in the short time we're in Gilead. So I, well, maybe we can capture around it and just hang out there. How much would it take to capture? Because we're going pretty fast relative to it. I don't know if we can capture or not. Uh, that's too much. Yeah, we're not going to be able to capture. Not with the oblique way that we're approaching Gilly. Not when we're trying to encounter it like that. We're going to way too fast. So, no such luck there. But we'll at least do a pass by. If we had some world firsts here, I mean, I've got some world firsts to talk about. We entered the orbit of Duna, first flyby of Eve. We've got some monies from that stuff. Not a whole lot, though. Not on the level of completing a contract. I'm gonna clear up some space here. I'm going to turn off the micrometeoroid impact data for now. Hopefully it can transmit some of that off. Alright, we've got an empty hard drive. And I've also got to turn off the magnetometer, which takes a lot of space. Come on, Gilly SOI, where are you? There you are. Uh, yeah, it's only seven minutes inside the SOI, but I think that's enough to get this stuff. There's Gilly. Telemetry report is stored. I think everything's okay. Oh, we got low as well. Some low things. Is there an atmosphere around Gilly or is there something weird going on? Because there's a ghosty effect there. That's dubious. Okay. Now leaving Gilly SOI. And we got some Gilly science that we are transmitting. Okay, I'll turn, since we're not collecting the science, I'll turn on the micrometeoroid detector again now. So it can continue things, but let's not transmit it by preference. Let's get done with all the Gilly science transmission, and then we'll just let it be. We'll leave this probe alone after that. Okay, all the Gilly science has transmitted and we're still collecting micrometeoroid impact data. I'll leave it here. I don't think Gilly is going to interfere with it. It seems it's a low pro uh, probability event, <laughs> but uh, it's not impossible that we would accidentally smack into Gilly. It's just not likely to happen. I don't want to waste fuel messing with it just in case there's something more we can do with this. So we'll take the chance and it'll just keep transmitting what it can transmit. I'll, I don't think there's any point to getting the magnetometer out, but I'll do it anyway. Maybe the low science hasn't been finished yet. So about we're a little bit high. We're at 412 kilometers, so I don't know if we're going to get low at that rate. But right now we've got 320 science. Not the, not the amount that I was thinking we were going to get out of all this, but at least we got that. And at least we recouped some money thanks to the world's first stuff. So with that, I think I'll wrap it up here and we'll decide what to do with those uh, funds and science points in the next episode. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I will see you next time.